What's up, y'all? Been a little busy lately with uh, St. Patrick's Day preparations and whatnot. Take off this very fancy, expensive hat. So I haven't had as much time to do videos lately. I am making daily stuff over on TikTok, so check me out over there if you haven't. It's nice and short, nice and quick, so I can usually turn those out fairly quickly. But let's break down The Parting Glass, which is one of my all-time favorite songs. I covered this on the flute about a decade ago. Uh, probably worth it to take another look at it and uh, see some other different variations and other things we can do with it. Now with this song, there are a few different ways to play it. Uh, I'm playing it based on my favorite version, which is a version by Jimmy Keen, the accordion player. He does some really cool variations with it that I've adapted into mine. You can play it much more regularly, more of a, a rhythmic, uh, marchy kind of a sound, or you can play it more like an air, which is what I do. No matter how you play it though, we've got to start with the basic melody. And I'm gonna play it a little bit more structured, a little bit more rhythmically, just so we can kind of get it to line up and then we can feel free to adapt as we need to. So here we go, basic melody, first line. And then the second line is going to start the same way, a little bit of a variation on the end, as you might expect. So here we go. bit in the second octave and then it resolves differently, lands differently on the E minor. B part of this song tune jumps up to the uh, second octave, jumps on the high D, but it's not really going too far or into the very shrill range of the whistle. So here we go with the B part. Then, unlike a traditional jig or reel type of tune, we don't repeat the B part. We go back to the A part again. So really it's sort of A, A, B, A. Second A is a little bit different, so it's kind of hard to break it out that way. But again, back around to that same first line that we did in the beginning. That'd be the second line, not the first line, now that I think about it. But that's the whole song, and then it repeats, I think, through like five or six verses, depending on which, which version you're doing. Let's break down some of the ornaments and some of the fun stuff that you can have with this. One of the nice things about playing a slower tune, a slower marchy tune or an air, is that you have a little bit more time to think about what it is that you want to do. So what I would suggest, I'm going to give you a couple of different options for a lot of these things, and I would try as many of them as you can. See what sounds good to you, because the way you play and the way you hear it might be a little different than the way I do. So hopefully some options, let's break them down. So right off the bat, I'm sliding into that B. It's a sad, slow kind of song and that uh, slide sort of fits the mood pretty well, I think. Always remember when you're doing slide, slide up towards the top of the whistle, not across. There's only so much of that you can do because if you're like me, you don't have a whole lot of room, but try to aim your slides vertical. Keep that in mind. So here we go. Then a tap on the end just to separate those two notes, I would do that. Um, you could, again, if we're varying the rhythm, you could hold that note a little bit, in which case I would do a, a double tap or a uh, short roll. Again, a little bit more punchy than a single tap. That's one to experiment and see what works for you. Jumping up that phrase. I'll try to combine ornaments sometimes, particularly in a slower tune where you've got the time to think about it. And what I'm combining there is a cut with the slide. Then a tap to separate and then another slide to get up to the A. A lot of slides in this, in this tune. There again now, a lot of slides and we're working in a few cuts as well, combining um, the, the slide with the cut here. And then a cut to finish the phrase just to separate those two low notes. Again, repeat. Now you could do a, a real fancy double cut on that move. I, I use that from time to time. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting with this finger and then this finger fairly quickly, basically like two thirds of a crayon. 
could do that. That always felt a bit much to me. And again, cut slide, combining those two ornaments. And then there again, the double cut on the high E. I tend to use that on E's. It just fits my fingers well, fits my brain well, I suppose. And particularly going up to that higher part of the scale, the first time we broke into the higher octave, it's going to be a little bit louder. It's going to be sort of the crescendo of this part. Good to throw a little extra accent on that. A lot of uh, descending taps, crossing noises, as I call them. As I land on that G, I'm bouncing off the F sharp first. Same thing on the low E to finish. And that's the A part. A lot of stuff there for basically three notes. D, E, and you're dropping down to the low B. So, I'll do that same double cut uh, on the D. Again, half a crayon or two thirds of a crayon. These two fingers here. Sliding up to the E, and as I come back down to the D, Cutting that, that move as well. Double cut there on the E to get back down. Same move again there. Double cut to land on the D. You could tap that uh, C natural. That's one of those kind of weird physics things about the flute. I don't always do that because it, to me it's a bit jarring, but try it, see if it works. Sliding off the B. Same phrase as we had in the A part there. And then turning back around, we're going to end the same way. Same double cut on the E, and then the cut slide going into the G. I've, I've talked about that before. The, I mentioned in the beginning the, the um, a short roll on the low E. If you preempt that short roll with tonguing, it really spices it up. <laughs> really accents it a, a little bit more, I think, and, and makes it stand up. Now, if we want to screw around with the rhythm, turn this from a song or a march into something a little bit more freeform like an air. What I would recommend is give a listen to the track that I'm posting down below, the Jimmy Keen uh, version of this tune. He'll inspire you probably a lot more than I could ever try to break down with just the whistle because he's got chords working and it really flows well and it tells the story a lot better. So give that a listen if you want to experiment with a song, changing it from more of a standard to uh, something you might play as a showpiece. So let me know what y'all think of this one. Happy St. Patrick's, y'all. Hope you guys have a fun one. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.